Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, April 24th, 2013. We begin with some interesting news from the world of agriculture. Researchers at the University of Washington have made some surprising discoveries involving the gas hydrogen sulfide. In case you didn't know, hydrogen sulfide is an extremely toxic substance that pretty much kills anything that doesn't actually produce the stuff. It's also likely responsible for a mass extinction event that happened about 250 million years ago and killed 75% of everything. But through a fortunate accident, it may actually help save lives. The original research was studying hydrogen sulfide toxicity in plants. It's usually lethal between 30 and 100 parts per million in water. However, the scientists accidentally used only about tenth of the intended amount and got a surprising result. The plants actually got a giant boost in growth, and this was so surprising they repeated it several times. Basically, the entire growth process gets accelerated. A higher percentage of seeds germinate, they develop leaves and roots faster, and yield nearly doubles. There does seem to be a sweet spot. Too little and you don't get the same effect, and too much and the hydrogen sulfide becomes lethal again. Now the scientists think this entire mechanism may be a leftover from that aforementioned extinction event. Since hydrogen sulfide could easily kill smaller plants, with larger ones having a better shot at survival. When they detect the substance, they immediately increase growth to help them survive. Right now, the most promising application is with algae and other biofuels feedstock. Normally, when plants grow larger, their cells just increase in size, but hydrogen sulfide makes plants produce smaller cells and more of them. This means there is a higher percentage of lipids that can eventually get developed into biofuel, perhaps greatly increasing their potential for energy. Next is news from the world of technology. Speaking of renewable energy, a group over at MIT has made an important advancement in solar panel technology. Based on our understanding of physics, there is a theoretical limit to how efficient a standard photovoltaic solar cell can be. That limit is 34%, and we've not even reached it yet. But the MIT group has discovered a way to eventually surpass this limit greatly. You see, in a standard photovoltaic material, one photon of light knocks loose one electron, with the remaining energy from the photon wasted as heat. But theoretically, some materials would generate two usable electrons per photon. This has been known since the 1960s, but it's taken until now to actually create a proof-of-principle solar cell. Which is exactly what the MIT team did using the substance pentacene in an organic solar cell. The current system is not at all optimized as current efficiency is just under 2%, but they have proven it is possible. They think that efficiency could be increased to over 30% compared to conventional solar panels at 25% efficiency, and within a relatively short period of development time. Which doesn't sound like much, but is a big deal considering that some other groups are working on boosting efficiency by a tenth of a percent. The next step is optimization investigating other materials that may work even better, and integration with current solar panel technology. Lastly, we have a story from the world of neuroscience. Here on Brainstorm, we've covered stem cells a lot, and in particular, research that's related to generating neurons. Now, a study from the University of Wisconsin-Madison has been investigating how effective stem cells actually are at repairing the brain. For this research, they used mice that were engineered not to reject tissue from other species. That's because they were actually using human embryonic stem cells. To prevent any unwanted cell types from forming during the treatment, they partially coaxed the stem cells into being neurons before implanting them in the mice's brain. Also, the mice had a memory and learning center of the brain, called the medial septum, damaged beforehand. After two major types of neurons were cultured from the stem cells, they were injected into the mice's hippocampus, also related to memory. It appeared to help repair some of the damage as the mice scored better on memory and learning tests after the stem cell treatment. It'll be some time before this is applied to humans, but these results are very encouraging and actually demonstrate the potential power of stem cells for regenerating the brain. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In reference to our first story, how would you implement smelly and potentially deadly hydrogen sulfide into agriculture? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.